Hello again to all subscribers and listeners of this channel. This is Obsidian Radio, and this shall be a review of the very emotionally intense episode 18 of Attack on Titan Season 3. The episode entitled Midnight Sun. This was at the tail end of a fantastic battle sequence where the scouts fought against both the Armored Titan and the Colossal Titan. Well, at least on that side of the particular conflict. While Captain Levi sliced up the Beast Titan on the outside of the wall. Now we're seeing the aftermath of this tragic conflict. And certain things that happened has led to many deaths as well as a very difficult decision to be made by our heroes. So then, let's get into this. Very brief first thoughts. Wow. Um. Damn. This is this is gonna be some very emotionally intense right here. Everyone fought hard and put their lives on the line, but no matter how hard they fought, some of them got caught up in the tragedy, and many of them were at death's door. Whatever decisions they make is going to be very very difficult, and I wonder what decision I would have made had I been in that same situation. So let's get into the plot. Here's how episode break 18 broke down. This was a very intense episode from the beginning. As soon as episode 18 opens, we're greeted with a very intense scene. We see Aaron Yeager kneeling between a severely burnt Armin, Arlert, his best friend that he's known since childhood, and an unconscious Bertolt Hoover, someone Aaron saw as a friend for a couple years. When in reality, Bertolt was one of the main reasons for Aaron's suffering throughout this entire series. Aaron is lamenting about what Armin did and how brave Armin was. Suddenly, the Cart Titan appears, carrying a very badly damaged, very badly injured Beast Titan in human form on his back. Aaron brings a blade to Bertolt's throat, threatening to slice Bertolt if they come too close. Suddenly, the Beast Titan speaks to Aaron. About his father brainwashing the both of them. What? Like, that's what he said. That's what, or at least the way he hinted at. He then says that he'll be back to save Aaron in the future. The Beast and the Card Titan run off leaving Bertolt to his fate. Captain Levi drops down in front of Aaron right after the Cart and Beast Titan run away. Levi demands Aaron's ODM gear. And then suddenly Armin starts breathing again. As Aaron slowly turns over to look at him. Meanwhile, Hanji is interrogating Reiner while he's both dislimbed and blindfolded. She orders Mikasa to go back and check on Aaron and Armin. She then discovers a note that was for a story that Reiner had with them. As they talk, Reiner d- tells her that he wanted Historia to get that note. Hanji says she'll give it to her, but they have to inspect it first. Hanji decides, along with a lot of persuasion from Jean, to keep Reiner alive until they can figure out what they're going to do with him. Suddenly, the Cart Titan shows up. While almost nearly colliding with both Hanji and Jean, the Cart Titan scoops up Reiner and runs away again. Connie tries to go after him, but Hanji dis- dissuades him. When Mikasa arrives, she's greeted with a very, very intense scene of Captain Levi leaning on the roof, while Aaron is desperately trying to convince Armin to keep breathing. Aaron then begs Captain Levi for the Titan Serum, so that we can turn Armin into a Titan, and get a Titan version of Armin to consume Bertolt. Just then, Flock, Flock Forster, the redhead one, he climbs onto the roof, with, and with him he brings a severely injured Commander Erwin, who's still breathing, but only just barely. The Titan Serum that Levi was about to give to Armin, is now being held by Levi, who plans to use it on Commander Irwin instead. And here's where the intensity really starts to ratchet up. After a lot of debate with Aaron, Levi, Flock, and Mikasa, Aaron is knocked off the roof. Mikasa strikes Levi. Levi is pinned down by Mikasa on the roof. Flock nearly attacks Mikasa. Mikasa is held back by Hanji. And a lot of crying and screaming is going on. 
But right when Levi is about to inject Erwin with the Titan Serum, Erwin raises his hand and says, I guess unconsciously he's repeating what was he said when he was a child. Teacher, how do we know that there are more humans outside the walls? Quote, unquote. And with that, we're given a flashback of Erwin accepting his fate. That he would die with his comrades. Never to see the basement or the secrets that are in it. And he would never bring himself or anyone else through this hell ever again. He decided that. He didn't actually want to come back if he knew he was going to be close to death. And they accepted it. Levi remembers Erwin. And his words. The conversation that they had while on the battlefield just before they defeated the Beast Titan. Levi and Hanji accept the fate of Commander Erwin. They said that he has fallen. And with that, Armin is the one given the Titan Serum. He's transformed into what looks like an 8 or 5 meter Titan. He then grabs Bertolt, who startled and awakened. Bertolt screams out in terror. He screams for Andy and Reiner to come save him, but they obviously can't do that. And he screams his last scream before Armin, in his Titan form, crunches down on his head and spine, absorbing Bertolt into himself. As his titan falls, Hanji and Levi stay near Commander Erwin as he breathes his last breath. Armin slowly emerges from his titan form, fully healed and fully conscious, and his friends gather around him as they cry tears of joy that Armin Arlert is now alive and well and will continue to be a part of them. Interesting things that I noticed. First, I'm going to point out the interesting things that I noticed. Then, we're going to break down why I think they made the right choice overall. First, let's go through the interesting things. One, the lack of music throughout most of this episode. There was very little music in the episode. And just like when Aaron finally cut down Bertolt and the lack of music, it actually added to the intensity and the beauty of the situation rather than take it away. Sometimes silence actually helps build up the awesomeness in particular scenes or in particular episodes of any show or any animated series. This is one of those times where it's done perfectly to not put music in there. Absolutely, absolutely adored the way Wit Studio decided to keep certain scenes completely silent, except for some really intense and beautifully written dialogue. Two, the meeting of Aaron and the Beast Titan. Very interesting to see that flashback or not flashback more. There is the weird flash on the screen where you see Grisha just to pose directly over the Beast Titan's face. And you see them almost meld together. What did that mean? Also, the cryptic message that was said. Father brainwashed you too. Very interesting. I'd like to see what's going on with that in the future. Three. Reiner barely made it out alive. Wow. That dude's lucky. So let's see, Reiner got blown up twice, he got ripped out of his titan body, got his limbs cut off, got blindfolded, had his head blown off, had to regrow it, continued trying to fight, even though his body didn't fully all the way regenerate yet. If you look closely at the last episode, his skin and certain parts of his limbs and face didn't fully regenerate, but he was trying to fight anyway. And then he almost had his throat slashed by Hanji. Before the cart titan finally saved him. Barely. And almost exclusively. The hesita- hesitation of Jean and Hanji. Those are the things that pretty much allowed him to get away. And be alive. Again. Reiner is super lucky. Number four. Who actually made the final decision to me. Was actually Commander Erwin. It wasn't Aaron or Levi. That decided to save Armin. It was actually Erwin who decided that he didn't want to be a part of this hell anymore. I mean, Erwin has had hundreds of comrades that died serving him. Whereas Armin didn't. Armin doesn't have a trail of death behind him the way Erwin did. So, as far as I can see, to me, it looked like Erwin was the one who said, how do we know that there are humans on the other side of the walls or something along those lines? Whereas Armin was pretty sure of those life and people outside the walls, he wanted to discover it, especially discovering the ocean. So when you look at it, Erwin had given up on his dreams 
and seemed to see no more need for his own existence after defeating the Titans. Whereas Armin was on the other side. Armin made the decision that there was still something else going on after defeating the Titans in this particular situation. Number five, Armin's, Armin's Titan was kind of small, probably around eight, maybe even five meters or so. I thought that was interesting that they made it really little. Maybe that has something to do with his character. I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. Also, the missing nose. Very interesting. Now, as far as who should have been chosen, and the reason why I think they did make the right choice. Number four explains this, but let me go into it. Reasons why Armin should have been chosen. One, Armin is younger, and symbolically killing him off wouldn't make a lot of sense when it comes to this idea of moving forward and making a brighter future. You usually want the younger generation to move forward, not the older generation. Two, Armin was more positive and hopeful about the future than Erwin was. Again, Erwin's idea was to just simply defeat the Titans and find out what's in the basement. Armin's idea was, yes, we need to defeat the Titans, but also see what's outside the walls and see the beauty that's out there. Much more positive, much more uplifting. Three, Armin was more selfless. If you look closely, Erwin was willing to use everyone around him as weapons, as bait to get to his end goal. Armin was not willing to do that as much. He wanted to protect and help everybody around him, not use everybody as tools the way Erwin did. Not to say one was right or wrong, but they just had different ways of doing Getting their goals met. Number four. Armin's quick thinking, intelligence, attention to detail, and situational awareness has been a huge benefit to the scouts from day one. A beautiful example of how intelligence and not just brute strength can be a huge help on the battlefield. Something we don't see often enough in storytelling, in my opinion. But if you think about it, in like five or six months, Armin made major wins for the scouts that Erwin probably didn't do in the years of being the commander. Very interesting. Now, on the other side, reasons why Erwin should have been chosen. You could argue that, one, Erwin was the voice of hope for the troops. He was able to motivate the troops to move forward even when they were the most afraid, which is a positive, a genuine positive. Two, he was a good leader and could rouse his troops in right into the right mental state to push forward in almost any situation. It didn't matter. Three. Commander Erwin has more experience. Fighting the Titans. Than almost everyone else in the story. Including even Levi. But outside of that. There's just not enough going for him. In terms of keeping him alive. In terms of Armin versus Erwin. Again. Armin was younger. And represents a new hope. A new day. And a new age for humanity. Whereas Erwin. Represented the past endurance. The past pain and the past ability to stay strong through their struggles against adversity or against an adversary. Armin was more selfless in terms of wanting to save humanity and see the beauty outside of the walls. Erwin seemed hell-bent on defeating the Titans, even if that meant sacrificing people he cared about. But he didn't have many plans beyond doing just that. Yes, Erwin is the commander, but Erwin's skills as a military leader never stop the scouts from being killed. No level of commanding skill actually stopped or reduced the scouts' death rate. Whereas Armin, on multiple occasions, either stopped people from dying or greatly reduced the amount of death that could have occurred around them because of his quick thinking and attention to detail, something that Erwin lacked. So look at it this way. If Erwin was in the situation, people died while he was ultimately winning in that particular conflict. When Armin was there, people either didn't die or they died less because he did something that actually kept everyone at a much lower chance of dying to begin with. Even though he wasn't a leader, he was a thinker. Think about it this way. Like I said, like I mentioned this earlier, four or five months, Armin helped the scouts get wins in situations more than all the years that Erwin was commander of the scouts. Very big difference. Huge difference. Very big contrast. Again, Erwin only got the scouts enough courage to fight to their deaths. While Armin figured out how to plug the hole in Walmaria, one of the holes, figured out the identity of the female Titan, distracted Berto, which led to Eren's recapture in Season 2. 
He helped develop the plan to challenge Kenny's squad inside the underground chamber. Discovered where Rhino was hiding, which almost led to a very early victory against at least the armor titan very early in, in the episode 13. Almost had that. Almost had it. Almost exclusively because of Armin's ability to think outside the box. And eventually, he uses observational skills to lead them to a final and decided defeat of the Colossal Titan. The Titan that started this chapter in this long-running war. Everything Armin did gave them a win, an edge against the enemy, or at the very least, a drastically reduced number of dead on their side during major conflicts. Something that Erwin just never really did, or not on that level. Erwin was a symbol of hope on the battlefield with his troops. Armin was the brain that actually calculated a way to make sure the scouts don't die as much. And actually got the scouts a few wins. When it comes to battle, no matter how inspirational you are, having a good brain that can figure things out is a much bigger advantage than being the eloquent speaker or the leader that can lead you into a charge against the enemy. Or being a somewhat selfish but strong leader, so just not going to match up to someone who can think critically in these intense situations. Again, another reason why Armin was and should have been chosen was actually Commander Erwin himself. He himself knew that he was at death's door and he accepted that long before Armin even faced the Colossal Titan. Erwin was the one that knew that he had selfishly led his scouts to their deaths. That was his choice and he accepted that. Something that he would have to atone for. He wanted out of this world once he knew he would never achieve his dream. That's why he knocked the syringe out of Levi's hand. He accepted that his time had come. Whereas Armin didn't. Armin still wanted to live life. He still wanted to see the world beyond the walls. He wanted to experience life beyond just fighting titans. He hadn't given up on his dream or on his life just yet. Even when he was facing the Colossal. So ultimately, as far as I'm concerned, it was actually Erwin that chose not to come back from the brink of death. So technically, we need to thank Commander Erwin Smith for leading the way for Armin to be brought back among the world of the living. I think it was the right call. Animation quality. Absolutely on point animation from beginning to end. As far as I can see, the animation quality was a 10 out of 10 for this episode. I didn't see anything remotely off about the animation this episode. I thought it was completely on point. Like I said, 10 out of 10. Best about the episode was the entirety of the interactions between all the characters as they all emotionally debated over who should live and who should die. Especially the dialogue was so epic, so well written, and very believable. Well done to Asayama Hajime, and well done to which studio the way they produced this when it was animated. The worst about the episode was there was nothing remotely bad about this episode. This episode was pretty much perfect. My favorite scene was very obviously the scene where Armin is revived and everyone around him is crying tears of joy that he is alive and is back with them in the world of the living. As far as a 1 out of 10 score, this episode gets a 10 out of 10 for me. I didn't see anything wrong with this episode. I thought everything was on point. From the lack of music in certain scenes to the music at the very end, the dialogue, the interaction, the ambiance, the, the, the scoring, the the entire vibe of the episode, the atmosphere, even the coloration, the color palette in the background, not the character shading. Everything was on point with this episode, in, in my humble opinion. Overall summary... This was a splendid episode for a number of reasons. It showed the strong emotional bond of many characters. It showed what the sacrifices were that they were willing to make for each other. Such as Moblet pushing Hanji into the well to shield her from the Bertolt's explosion. It showed that the good guys on the same side are not always going to agree with each other when it comes to major decisions. And this actually is very common when it comes to these type of conflicts. It showed that sometimes intelligence actually can be a better asset to winning a war than just bravery or blind courage. It showed us a movement from an old guard to a new generation. 
when it comes to this particular world that they live in. It showed us very real depth to the characters and who they are emotionally. It did a, it did all this splendidly. It did a splendid job of showing all these incredibly awesome things. Very touching, very intense, and very powerful episode. Absolutely loved it. I think everybody else loved it also. Nice. Very well done. Cold-blooded. And that's all for now. This video went kind of long, but I really had to break this down, what I thought about it. Beautiful episode. Hope you like my review. Please like, subscribe, share, and donate to support this channel. You all have a nice day. I'm out. Peace.